Nigeria launches open treasury portal to curb corruption and ensure transparency. Uganda Central Bank holds key lending rate and says GDP growth moderating. South Africans asked to prepare for a new week of rolling blackouts, even a state-owned presser goes under administration. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. We begin here in Nigeria as the federal government mandates the Office of the Accountant General to issue a daily Treasury Statement of Government's transactions. The Treasury Statement is expected to encompass all inflows and outflows of transactions of all ministries, departments and agencies. At the launch of the federal government Open Treasury Portal in Abuja today, the Minister of State for Niger Delta, Mr. Tayo Alashua explains that the initiative is aimed at ensuring transparency in government as well as curbing corruption. And to the markets now, it looks like a bright start of the week for markets in South Africa despite the blackout rolled by state utility ESCOM over the weekend into Monday. At intraday, the Jersey index was the sole winner amongst the markets we track here on the continent. The index was up 0.19%. The Nigerian stock market looks set to start the week negative with the index down 0.49% at intraday. Egypt's EGX30 was also down 0.28%. Egypt is considering issuing three bond offerings during the current 2019-2020 fiscal year. The possible offerings could include issuing green, Islamic and variable yield bonds. Kenya closed positive on Friday. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabian shares rose for a second day following the agreement between OPEC and its allies to extend output cuts by 500,000 barrels per day, while other major Gulf equities saw a sluggish start. The benchmark index rose 1.13 percent at intraday, with Saudi Basic Industries and National Commercial Bank gaining 1.7 percent and 1.5 percent each. Meanwhile, the Saudi stock exchange Tadawul said on Friday, trading in Aramco's share will commence on December 11. In the meantime, the Qatari index dropped 0.97%, dragged down by a 0.8% fall in Qatar National Bank, followed by a 0.4% decrease in in Industries Qatar. In the UAE, Dubai index edged down 0.35%, with Emma Properties losing 0.5%, and its unit Emma Malls shedding 1%. The Abu Dhabi index also inched 0.40%, lower, extending losses for a third straight session. All right, let's cross over to Europe now, where stocks traded slightly lower in the morning as weak Chinese export data highlighted the detrimental impact of its prolonged trade war with the U.S. Meanwhile, German import and export data for October published before the bell offered a welcome surprise to rise by 1.2 percent despite global trade tensions. Well, let's see how European investors are reacting to this. Chelsea is on board to tell us. Hello, Chelsea. Good to see you. Another good week for us. Now, German exports in October were surprisingly strong, rising 1.2% from a month earlier. How are investors responding to this report, uh, given the weak data on the industrial sector last week? I think this is report is a bit of a surprise for investors, just as last week's data was a bit of a surprise for investors. There's a lot of kind of confusing data coming out of uh, out of Germany right now. But today's report was much stronger than expected. Uh, the consensus, consensus expectation was for a decline in exports in October. Uh, they rose 1.2 percent over the past month and about 1.9 percent compared to a year ago. And uh, German exports have been holding up pretty well, despite all of these economic Economic headwinds um, that the country is facing right now. Uh, and just a week ago, just uh, last week, there were two reports on the industrial sector that were um, quite disappointing. So uh, showing big declines in, in both industrial orders and uh, industrial production. So it's, it, a lot of investors and economists aren't really sure what to make of all of these conflicting signals from the German economy. Um, I think today's report uh, sort of eases a little bit of, of fears that Germany is heading right back for recession, um, but it doesn't really change the narrative for Germany that um, growth is, is very low, growth prospects are for stagnation, um, and at best we're looking at a little bit of growth. So I think this really won't do much to, to brighten investors' outlook on a, a potential growth resurgence from here.
All right, let's see what's happening in France. French workers are striking for the fifth day against President Emmanuel Macron's proposed pension reform. What are workers' concerns about the changes? Well, workers are very concerned about this pension reform because France is really known for having um, one of the most generous pension plans in, in a developed country. Um, a lot of workers there can retire in their 50s. Um, there's just a, a very generous um, a system there. Whenever Emmanuel Macron took over as president in 2017, he vowed to do a lot of, um, a lot of different social reforms. And they've obviously all been um, a little bit unpopular among the working class. But uh, what he's saying now is that, you know, France has 42 different pension systems. They need to be united. And they also are dealing with the same problem that a lot of uh, pension systems around the world are dealing with of uh, an aging population and not enough young people paying into the pension. So he says, you know, we, we have to do this now because there just aren't enough people paying into the system. But for workers, they're obviously very upset because um, this would uh, Im implement a, a retirement age at 62. As I said, a lot of, um, a lot of people, uh, civil servants, people working in transportation can retire in their 50s now. A lot of uh, workers are also upset because they feel like this would uh, reduce the level of their pensions and, and make them work past the age of 62 because um, there are different ways in which this proposal uh, would incentivize working past the, the official retirement age. So um, a, lot of, a lot of unpopular aspects of this report. But uh, for now, it seems like both sides are really standing their ground. Uh, transportation workers are, are saying they would like to extend the, uh, extend the strike to at least till the end of, the, uh, end of this week. There's been talk of extending through Christmas. Um, and at the same time, the, the French government is pushing through with these plans. They're supposed to present uh, final details over the next couple of days. So there's still a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, distance between these two parties on, on negotiations. And meanwhile, there's a lot of chaos in France that's certainly going to have an impact on, on businesses and, and the economy. Well, Chelsea is the start of a new trading week. What else are European investors going to be focusing on this week? There's a lot, uh, a lot of potential news this week. So tomorrow, um, a big topic is going to be Deutsche Bank's uh, an Investor Day, which is being held here in Frankfurt. They're in the midst of this restructuring program. Investors are, are going to be looking for more details on things like cost cutting and, and how the restructuring is going. Um, there is also an, the European Central Bank will release its latest decision on Thursday, and this will be the first press conference under uh, Christine Lagarde, who took over uh, as, as president recently. Um, the UK election is obviously going to be very closely watched um, for, for investors looking for more details on uh, potential Brexit. Um, and then, of course, always the overhang of US-China trade uh, tensions. Um, the deadline for the latest round of tariffs is expected uh, on, on Saturday. So I think investors are, are gonna keep watching for any sort of um, signs of, of a truce between those two parties. Hmm. The week looks quite busy for us. Uh, we have quite a lot to chew in the week, so let's keep an eye on those developments. Thank you, Chelsea. Enjoy the rest of the day.